everybody. Welcome back to another Saturday night smoke show and this is Memorial Day weekend so this is going to be a little bit of a different live stream and also we have a little bit of a different ration. A little bit, a lot, eh, you decide. So if you're watching this back at some point let me know what you think about this particular ration. Is it really different? What kind of, do you think it's uh, a good interpretation of a K ration? We're going to find out. So this is not to be taken as a uh, as a reproduction. It's not that. This is just basically what Bob takes at. Well, Black Dog Bob first of all sent me this. Thanks to Black Dog Bob for sending it over, and. It, this is his idea of what a K ration would be built today with modern products using old technology. So, basically, what type of food we have today, all uh, in cans like they had back then. So, that's kind of where we're at with this. From what I understand, that's me and him had a discussion about this, and I kind of wanted to find out exactly what his take was, what he wanted people to think about it or know about it and I want to convey that along over to you guys and then you can decide after we take a look at this thing so uh, real quick let me go through the chat and say what's up to uh, Aletha Dub C Miss Marilyn I saw her in there uh, Ration M what's up Tracy Phillips how you doing buddy good to see you in the chat my man uh, Robert hey what's up Bob uh, Ordo hey Ain't seen that name in the chat in a minute. Let's see here. Who else is in here? PXG Doolin. Hello. Curious Pete. How you doing, man? Has Bus Stop made it yet? I want to say what's up to Bus Stop if he's made it in here. All right. Now, so I've brought out quite a few items that were a few things I don't have much that belong to my grandpa I don't uh, I do have a few items I did bring a, a few of them out if not almost well not all but almost all um, and I also have a couple of things you know we'll, we'll check out towards the end of the stream might might not be everybody's cup of tea so I don't want to ramble on and you know go through a bunch of that stuff right now but I will be talking about and remembering somewhat and some things about my grandpa and, and I I'm going to go through a little bit of his service history, too. I've got some documents that uh, I'll try to pull up if I can do that. I will make an attempt to, to get those documents pulled up. And I might even uh, get down underneath my table here and try to pull out the box that his medals came in. And I've got, uh, I've got a few of his medals that are out on display with a flag that I have right here that you guys probably see in the thumbnail. So, uh, I'm probably going to have to sit down, up and down, and up and down a lot. I freaking took a slip in the shower today. Um, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> so, we're going to not fool around, and we're going to get right into this ration. Because, like I said, I've got a bunch of other stuff I want to I wanna get to, too, just to kind of... We're just going to kind of have fun with this one. We're not going to get... It's not going to be anything serious at all. This is just going to be having some fun, checking out a ration. Uh, I'm going to do my best to not make a huge mess up here because the things that I'm going to bring up here afterwards, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want them to get messy. All right, let me set these things up here out of the way for now. All right. Now this did come with a card. Uh, says, "Let me know what you think, brother, Bob." And if you see this video and you watch it and you like this and you want to get one of your own, well, there you go. Go to Minotaur, MinotaurTrading.com. There's a link right at the top of the description. I have no clue what these things are going to cost. Didn't even ask. Uh, probably should have. But I didn't. 
So uh, you'll have to find that out on your own. Or maybe Bob will pop up in the chat here at some point, And you can ask him if he pops up in the chat. Um, I'd say, I'd assume, these are for sale probably right now over on the website. I don't know. I really don't know. But, <laughs> as you can hear, it's uh, it's got a little bit of a jingle to it, I would say. Oh, cool. Piece of fuzz on my arm there. Alright, hang on, I'm going to have to move this... Uh, I wouldn't call this a surprise, just something I'm going to bring out here later. Um, so I did do a little bit of a, I would call it broad research today, just uh, just looking back at World War II and uh, food in general and K-rations and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I, I find out some pretty interesting things, which I will... Uh, I'll be talking about some of those things throughout and uh, really one very interesting fact that I didn't I guess I just never realized I should have known it but I didn't didn't find it out till today so today's a good day I actually learned some things and uh, any day that you can learn something new you are doing well so this thing weighs I'm gonna guess about four pounds or so yeah I, I'm gonna say it probably right about maybe maybe a little over a little over a little under i don't know right around four pounds maybe five pounds so four or five pounds like that's typically what you're going to see on uh, a, a canned 24-hour ration so let's see what was the last five pounder okay i'll give you a good for instance uh british 24-hour ration right about four and a half to five pounds depending on the menu and what what the contents are i mean they can run anywhere from like four and a quarter pounds up to like five, a little over five pounds. So this is right around the same weight in my hand, or it feels that way, of a British 24-hour ration. Now, as you know, well, if you don't know, a K ration was more of an emergency ration that guys during World War II, mostly uh, guys like guys that were going to be deployed out in the field and away from any type of uh, any type of kitchen of any sort any way to get any hot food or whoa awesome sorry guys just knocked that over and I knocked something back there over too anyways uh, what was I saying It, they'd carry it around in their pocket or something. Guys that were going to be away, or if they were going to, like, tank operators. Uh, who else? Uh, anybody who's in a situation where they're going to be out in the middle of nowhere at some point in time or another would be issued K-rations. So, a K-ration was really the bare minimum of what you could call a single meal. I you know, the calories were enough for a meal, I guess. You know, back then, it was the beginning of a mobile emergency type ration like that. The K-ration was, was basically more for emergencies, even though they were they were eaten pretty often. But it's it's definitely, uh, it was one, if not the most famous ration of World War II. Because a lot of hard work and technology went into developing the K-ration. And we also, you know, most people also have heard of the C-ration, which came about during World War II. So the C-ration and the K-ration both came to fruition during World War II. Now, the... Uh, the C ration kind of lived on. The K ration did not. So let's see what's in this one. Okay. Now right there. There's a little explanation right on the lid. Is it all there? It's all there. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I got it all in frame. This is not a historic, 
Ugh, I'm trying to read through the screen. This is not a historically accurate reproduction. It is intended to be a modern day retro K ration. Uh, what would a K ration look like today if the military was still using the type of technologies, uh, th this type of technologies in its rations? Uh, this ration is one of the concepts we came up with. I hope. Uh, you enjoyed this ration as much as we enjoyed creating it. And inception date was May of 2022. Wait, what? Oh, that's an inspection date. I thought that said inception, like when they thought of it. <laughs> My bad. Okay, anyway. So we open it up. What do we see? We see cans. We see a spoon. And we see crackers and a, and a, and a chocolate bar. So just right off the bat, this definitely looks like a lot more than what a K-ration would be. So I wish I had a K-ration that I could pull up here and uh, and show you guys. Now, what I could do, I guess, is, is pull up a photo of a K-ration. Of content, K-ration contents. Because some people don't know what came in a K-ration. And I'll, you know, give you a visual reference Let's see, contents. Let's see what we got here that pops up. All right. Images. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's good right there. No, that's those are reproductions. My bad. And okay, here's an original. And this is a supper. So there is a supper K ration. And what's the main in this one? It's either going to be cheese or meat and cheese. Uh, beef. Nope. Beef and pork loaf in that. And you got your crackers. And then you also have some caramels or caramels. One single stick of gum. A four pack of non filter camels, a little, I'm going to guess 30 gram or 50, all right, maybe it's 33 grams of sugar. Hang on, let me get it to focus. I have three boxes of these, I uh, just didn't get them out. The exact same sugars. Uh, is that a lemon? Nope, that's bouillon right there. So you got your soup base, and this one came with. Uh, coffee. So you got coffee, you got your bouillon, sugar. What's the sugar for? Huh. So you don't have a cold drink that that sugar goes with or anything. Not in this one. Uh, those contents look to be in pretty daggone good shape and those uh, biscuits look pretty good too. But there you go. That's typically what came in, well that, that not typically. So back when guys were getting k rations man like they could have gotten different contents they could have gotten uh gotten k rations handed out to them and had two dinners that were basically should have been the same and they would have had different contents in them different cigarettes could have been uh, well, obviously you, you didn't know what main you was going to get it's just a mystery uh, so your contents were always a crapshoot. You just never knew, never knew what you were going to get. Uh, you would have saved that sugar for a, for a a different meal, I would assume, for a drink, Miss Kalen. Uh, Gusto says, just have a few minutes to stop by and say hi, having some uh, family time after a busy weekend. Well, thank you for the super chat there, Gusto, and Mr. Gusto completed. The Iron Man last weekend, and I gotta say a huge congratulations to him for because that's that's monumental. Like that's huge. Dude's in shape. Let's just put it that way. I know I know he paid the price for it afterwards. <laughs> and any time you do something like that, you're putting your body through. Uh, well, I mean you're putting your body through hell. So, uh, I guess good luck to on, on your on, on the recovery and uh, cool. My cat's in there knocking stuff down. Anyway, so thank you for that super chat, Gusto. You guys go check out RC Gusto's channel. 
Been a while since Gusto posted anything over there, but it doesn't matter because he's still got plenty of videos that you can go over there and watch if you have not seen them. And if you have, go sit, watch them again. Comment, say Smokey sent you. I'd love, I just, I love to see those comments because I do look for them. <laughs> um, all right, let's go through this thing. Got your eating utensil, which is nice. Um, K ration might have came with a wooden, a little wooden spoon. I guess you can call it a spoon, a little. <laughs> spoon, not not dished, but a little flat piece of wood kind of shaped like a spoon. I used to have a couple of those too. I don't know where they're at. Uh, here we have a dark chocolate bar, and this has got like that uh, oh, what's it called? Wow. Brain fart. Yeah. Somebody will tell me in the uh, in the comments or in the uh, it, it's right on the tip of my tongue. I want to say, I know it's not ganache, but anyway. <laughs> Here we have an accessory kit can. How cool is that? I mean, I've only seen accessory cans a couple times. Obviously, back in the 50s, they did them for two years, one or two years, uh, that came with cigarettes and stuff like that in them. And then they did, uh, what, what, oh man, what country is that that does the accessory can? Cannot remember. I've seen a couple maybe three or four reviews of it. Steve, I think, might have been the first one that I saw that did the uh, that foreign ration with the, with the accessory can in it. Uh, before I go any further, let's look here. Because every single one of these will come with either a P38 or a P51. This one happened to come with a P51. And you got your uh, Shelby company there. So you got yourself a nice, brand new, never been used, way to cut your cans open so that's that's cool let's we'll set that right there for now and let's make some room here so i can set these accessory can that's just awesome and next we have a snack can okay a little snack can and next we have crackers and jam in a big old can and on the back here, you got a lot of uh, printing there. Minotaur Trading Company, veteran-owned and operated company located in Lexington, Kentucky. Our commitment is... Okay, sorry, I'm trying to read it through the screen. Our commitment is to provide quality products at affordable prices with five-star customer service. Thank you for your support. www.minotaurtradingcompany.com and if you go to Minotaur Trading Company and you want to place an order, use the code OS10. Get yourself 10% off your entire order. I do not and have never been paid anything. I just get to pass along savings to you guys. And I'm sure I could, um, you know, try to get paid for it. I just don't. I don't do that, man. That's not what I'm in this for. And here we have a drinks can. Okay, drinks in a can. All right, so that's going to have to take a step back so I can pull out more stuff here. Let's pull out these crackers. Next, we've got four packs of Sky Flakes crackers. All right. I don't know if I'm going to have this laid out properly. I want to have it laid out properly. There we go. Here we have our main, which is <laughs> corned beef hash. Yeah, buddy. Y'all know. Y'all know how I feel about corned beef hash. It's my favorite vintage MRE menu. So it's gonna be it's gonna be just fine in the in this setting right here. Let's see, can I make room back here to set this can? I don't know what I'm doing. I <laughs> there we go. All right. Get that can opener out here. Set it right there. And you also get a strip of 10 water purification tablets. Now, you'll find out why as we go further. Or I can just... Okay, so you're going to need a lot of water. Because you're going to have a lot of drinks. And if you're actually eating this thing out in the field, which you definitely 
definitely could do, and you need fresh or potable water, you can make yourself some. If you, all you gotta do is find some source of water, a creek somewhere, drop your tablets in, wait a little bit, and you got you some potable water. Cool. Also, we have some Cholula, right? Cholula? I think that's how you say that. Some Cholula hot sauce. Two packs of it. Awesome. I, I do like the extra step that they took here and put... It's actually sealed, too. I thought it was just, like, in this little packet, but no, it's, it's actually... Nope, never mind. <laughs> I thought it was sealed in there. It, uh, well, I think it was supposed to be. Or did I rip it? No, it's still in there. I must have just busted the seal on it. But, two packs of hot sauce. So there is everything other than the fact that we got to open cans that have stuff in them. Such as snack can the accessory kit and the drinks so let me move the let me move the box right there maybe doing my best here all right so now Let's go ahead and open up the uh let's open up the drinks can. I'm gonna use the P38 or P51, I'm sorry, that came with it. That was easy. Just kind of popped off there. Alright. Like a little paint can. And inside of here, we've got drinks. What we got here? We have easy. This is spiced apple cider. Awesome. Because uh, I think that's the same one that comes in MREs. Or has came in MREs. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I pulled one of them out of an MRE before. You get two of them. So there's two drinks. And those you can drink hot or cold. Either way. I would suggest room temperature because cold water doesn't mix up as well and then we also have one two three four four of these um i don't know what you call these they're kosher it says that so you get a fruit punch clear it's got 100 percent of your vitamin c in it pink lemonade clear Two, of the, two, two pink lemonade and two fruit punches. And then uh, I don't see why you couldn't drink out of that can. Right? I mean, it wouldn't hold much. I don't know how much that would hold. Maybe like four ounces? Not very much. So, there is your drinks. Out. I'm going to... Uh, what am I going to... Here, I'll set it back here. There's the drinks. Uh, accessory kit can. Let's take a look at what's in there. Again, break out the P51 here. Pop it open. And let's see what's in here. Alright, right off the bat, I see coffee. So you got a Nescafe Taster's Choice House Blend. One of those. Two of those, and three of those. So you got three coffees, and you can have those hot as well. So that makes five hot drinks so far, and four cold drinks so far. We are not done. Let's see what else is in here. Looks like we got. Uh, Out over here, and we'll, I'll bring it in as I go through it. Okay, oops, still something in there. Okay, 
All right, so to go along with our coffee, we have we've got one, two. I'm running out of room, so it's just going to kind of get piled up. You got three non-dairy creamers, and you got three packets of sugar. You also have. Where's it at? You got two nice little wet wet wet, wet wipes here. Set those back there. You have. Two more of the little clear drinks. I think that's what they're they're called clear something. This one, yep, they both have 100% of your vitamin C in them. So you get three pink lemonade and three fruit punches and three coffees and two apple ciders. And I think does that cover all the drinks? I think so. So three coffees, two ciders, and six more drinks right here I think that's that makes 10 okay all right so then you get two lifesavers after your meal this uh, this is shaping up to seem like it could easily feed two people at one time I think two people could indulge in this meal and uh, and be good to go because I do know that that main is 15 ounces. That's almost two full-size MRE mains. MRE mains, eight ounces. So, you're only missing out on a half ounce each that way. You get seven and a half ounces each if you split it right down the middle. And you get two salt and two pepper. So, and everything does actually double up here pretty much. Each get two packs of crackers. Each get a lifesaver. Each get a wet wipe. Uh, somebody's going to be fighting over one of the cups of coffee, and every yeah, each of you get three of these drinks here, three of the cold drinks. Uh, each person get a hot sauce, huh? Okay. Each person can have a Purell. These are these are pretty cool. I'm going to show you one of these here in just a second. I think maybe I already have showed you guys these, but we will do it again, and I'll show you uh, what's up with that a little. Hand sanitizers. You know the times that we're living in right now. Everybody's all about that hand sanitizer still yet. And here we have a true two true lemons. Not sure what to do with this, actually. Be nice if Bob could tell me what the intention behind this is. I can't remember. Uh, what are these? Oh, so the two sugar cubes. Interesting. Okay, so we got extra sugar right there. And then we also have chicken and beef bouillon cubes. So you can have some chicken broth and, or some beef broth. And again, one for each, you know, splitting it down the middle, two people. Or you can, well, I guess you could try to make two meals out of it. You only got the one main. Though, but anyway, you got a pack of Minotaur wooden Yep, wooden matches. They look like Q-tips. <laughs> Little white tips. Oh, yeah, nice and easy to strike. Those are actually pretty good matches. Burning nice and slow. But putting a decent flame off and it's hot, obviously. It's fire. Cool, 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 cool. And... Last two things in that can right here. You got two chem lights. So if you're trying to eat this thing in the dark, say you well, let's just say you're trying to eat this thing in the dark. Right here, this is going to get you through. You're going to be able to get through it with these and be able to see your food, mix your drinks, and see your spoon, you know, all that stuff. Boom. Two chem lights. Now, what else do I have to open up? Let's see, I've done the drinks can and the accessory can. I think that 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 might cover it. 
Uh, let's take a look in the crackers and jam can real quick. Actually, we'll go ahead and get it. I'm going to pull the tray out up here. Forgot my mess kit. Uh, I was going to do this on a mess kit, but there's so much food here, honestly. Uh, a mess kit really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for me right now. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. I forgot it anyway. <laughs> I, forgot to, I forgot to get it out. I've got my... Uh, my newer mess kit right here beside me, my Vietnam era mess kit, but I don't have my World War II era mess kit handy. All right, so uh, gotta move stuff so I can start putting stuff on the tray. Okay, <laughs> so much. This is a lot of food. Um, I would say, I mean, I guess a K ration just is a was a lot more compact, and uh, which obviously, I mean, this thing weighs in between four and five pounds. Judging, just guessing by hand how it felt in my hand. So, oh. Salt peppers and a whole bunch of drinks. Oh, hey, look, there's G. Schultz. Uh, glad so many were be were able to be a part of our stream last night. We had so much fun. Well, G. Schultz, you didn't have to do that, man. I appreciate that super chat, dude. And uh, man, thank you for being, you know, one of the one of the ones to kick this whole YouTube creation history off you know g schultz has been on youtube for 10 years now making ration review videos uh he'll tell you when he started out he never knew that he was going to do this you know regularly or that it would turn into such a hobby and uh i think he just kind of wondered what was in him and uh the really you know, you, you could, couldn't get a whole lot of visuals on what was in an MRE. So he started making videos. Uh, and uh, the rest is kind of history. So let's take a look. Is this... Hang on, I can get my other tray out here. Yeah. Let me get, let me get this one right here. Because I'll tell you what... This tray special anyways, both these are. But this one's more special than I realized. So back in 1942, the quartermaster came up with the metal tray. And the Navy at that point, they were using mainly plates porcelain plates, uh, you know, not very many bowls, mainly, mainly plates with a, with a decent dish to them, and, uh, immediately the Navy adopted the tray to be on every ship, and it eliminated so many dishes that they were doing, because instead of having two or three plates to, to hold their food, boom, one tray would pretty well cover it. You know, with five, six compartments, sorry, six compartments. And uh, this one, this is off the USS Cascade. And this is straight up a World War II tray. And it, this came with a set of uh, United States Navy silverware that I have as well. And every single, all the way up until 1947, I believe. The United, or four, it might have stopped in 45, I can't remember. But you won't be able to see it probably. And it's upside down, so I probably won't be able to get it. Yeah, it's not gonna show up. It's it's on there though. USN United States Navy stamped on this tray. 1942. And uh this is a first year tray. <laughs> the first year tray. I don't know if that makes it work anymore or not, but it should. 
and uh, the fact that it has this 25 stamped in it right here. I don't know if someone was so meticulous in the galley there on the USS Cascade that they literally stacked the trays by number, which would definitely add a whole bunch of extra work onto something that, I mean, that's just unnecessary to be 100% honest. There's no, no, but I mean, they're, they were all numbered. I guess, uh, whenever you wanted to take count to see if you were missing any, having them stamped like that would, would maybe come in handy and you'd know which tray was missing or they, uh, might have issued a tray, you know, you, your tray was number, my tray's number 25. So I'd get tray number 25 every day. I don't know. You know, I don't know about that. All right. So let's lay some of this out. I'm going to do what I, I guess. I, now that we've got it all out and we've looked at all of it, there's not a whole lot of point in me setting it all out. I'm, I'm not going to have room to keep it all on the tray. So, let me uh, put that box there. We'll do one cider. Put a cider back in the box. We'll use a pure uh, Purell. I'm not going to use any of the Aqua Tabs, guys. Uh, I'm not going to use a wet wipe right now either because I'm going to use the Purell. Do a coffee. Which means two of the coffees are going into the box. I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do with that. So that's going in the box. There's a sugar cube. There's our bouillon. There's a creamer and a sugar. And I'm going to use. Oh, I got an okay. I got an extra sugar there. Probably I'm going to use two creamers in that. All right, the rest in the box, and we will use. Let's see, pink lemonade and a fruit punch, which leaves me with many four four more of these. So I think we ended up with uh, I don't know. We ended up with a bunch of drinks. So, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven drinks. It seems like we ended up with eleven total drinks. There's a hot sauce. And we'll take one of our chem lights here. Why not? I'll turn all the lights out and we'll see. See that thing working? There's a lifesaver. The other one's going in the box. Like I said, man, there's plenty of food here for two people. Absolutely. Two people couldn't eat this and be happy. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, there's our crackers and jam can. Slide that over a little bit. There's our chocolate bar. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> There we go, finally. All right, corned beef hash I'll set up here. And da, 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 da. Set it right there for now. Accessory can. Drinks can. And there's our snack. Snack, singular, a snack. Okay, now what I want to do is, now I'll tell you what I did, did do. Uh, is I couldn't find the one that I'd used already. But during World War II, oh, son of a gun. Oh, yeah, I twisted it all up. Okay, that that's okay, I guess. Twist it around. Come on. Okay, I think that, that'll work. Anyway, during World War II, men were issued these stoves. And you'll see, it says USMC right here. Everybody thinks that's United States Marine Corps. It is not. That is the United States Metal Company. And uh, get this nice little fold out stove. This one does have a little bit of damage going on. I don't know what is going on with that. 
I need to try to figure out how I'm going to get that cleaned up. That sucks. I don't even remember it being like that. But as you can see, it's never been used. Or that would be, that'd be all nasty in there. And uh, it folds up. And you stick that bad boy right in your pocket. And uh, you got yourself a little Esbit stove. And if I can, yeah. Uh, I come with these little little tubes of fuel tablets that literally just fit right down in there. And you light the fuel tablet, and then you put your can. Well, got that adjusted a little wrong there. There we go. It's a little better. Hmm. I think I messed it up. Like that. And then you take your can and set it right on there like that. See, it sits right down inside those grooves. So it can actually slide around a little bit if you were in an unlevel surface. The, the little teeth would catch it. See? Also, I mean, it's made to accommodate a slightly larger can. Not that large. Not even close. But uh, a little bit larger than this can. The stove can accommodate it. And if it's any larger than that, then you can adjust it and make it set on top. You'd have to... I don't know, you'd have to mess with it. But you, you can make it work for sure with the big can. As you can see. I mean, it's sitting on there. It's just crooked a little bit. So, yeah. That is what they had. What did I do? Oh, there we go. That's what they had and handed out back in the 40s for guys to heat their food up with. So pretty cool all right so let's get the uh i'm gonna bob ross it today i don't know how many of y'all watched uh watched old bob ross when you were growing up oh, or when you was a teenager or whatever but uh but old bob kind of made a, a resurgence as a meme here in the past I would say over the past five to five years or so, even. I mean, he's definitely had. Come on, stupid dog. Uh, we, I get. We could heat that up with a with a similar stove, just using fuel here, which we'll want to get that going soon. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if I got something metal that I could set it on. Doesn't even really have to be metal, I don't guess. Let's just get let's just get the stove hooked up and we'll get her started. Let's just do it. And then we'll get the drinks and stuff going. Yeah? What do y'all think? We're gonna need that to open that up. And use the matches to get that started. But pretty much the same concept uh, with this little stove right here. Which, oh, Shocker, Shocker 71, he hooked me up with this stove right here, and uh, it's got little legs, it stands up, and it's already folded out, okay, probably don't need them all folded out like that, probably be better off with them in, I think, yeah, Gonna have to have them in. Holy crap. Oh, that's not. That ain't good. Alright. Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Get the, uh, the fuel on there. Let's see. Try to 
get it set up where, where y'all can see it. It won't be in my way too bad. Maybe like that. Yeah. And it does have a little, uh, little push button starter on it. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. It's sparking. Probably not. Focus camera. Let's see if it... Yeah, you can't see it on camera. Oh, yeah, you can. You can see it now. Okay. It's coming across on camera. Ooh. Steel braided hose all twisted up there. All right, let's uh, let's get it fired up. Just gonna try to use the uh, push button. Ooh, there it was. All right, that <laughs> fired right up. For some reason, guys, my chat has stopped working. Uh, as usual, so that's gonna sit on there. Barely. I mean. Honestly, that's that's borderline dangerous. I ain't gonna lie. That is uh, that could easily tip over. Just one little one little slip, and it's gonna. Yep, I'm gonna have to put that in water, guys. I guess. Unfortunately, I wanted to cook it on the stove, but uh, that can's kind of a little bit. It's not big around enough, and I don't have my mess kit out here to dump it in. So. That's simple enough. I'm going to go through it in some hot water. And I will be right back. Okay, so as I was in there, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to open the thing. So let's do that real quick. And uh, I'll get the... Oh, this thing's sharp. Get it pretty well. Yeah, this is a really sharp one. Hunter doll, I guess. I'm not used to... Not used to having a nice sharp one like this. But yeah, this would be virtually impossible once I get it heated up. It's got to be opened up beforehand. Alright, we're going to leave that on there. As a handle, I'll rinse that off while I'm in there real quick. And, uh, alright. Here we go. Be right back.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm give it about, I don't know, what do you say, five to seven minutes. And, uh, got a bunch of drinks to make up here. Let me get the salt and pepper out of the way. Real quick, Purell. This side down. Pretty simple instructions. You take it like this. all goes out into your hand that's every bit of it out of there I know where to put trash as usual oh i just brought a bag in here okay my hands together here and there's not so much in there that it like drips off your hands you know you rub your hands for just a few seconds and they're dry and it's all all gone. All gone. Yeah, I'm a little stopped up today for some reason. Okay, I don't know where that went. I just dropped it. <laughs> awesome. Alright, let's sit down here. Okay. We've got the creamer, sugar, sugar cube, and the coffee. Lemonade. All right, apple cider first. Actually, no, we're going to do the coffee first because I got. Just want to have old Bobby make an appearance. I have not used my Bob Ross mug in in a while. It's actually not even my mug. It's my son's mug. I've mentioned this before in videos that I've made and on live streams that my son got this cup and I just kind of claimed it, but he, he would have never used it. So, I have definitely gotten tons of use out of it. So, I think I got it all out. And I even have a trash bag set up over here. How awesome is that? Do real quick do creamer. Unfortunately, uh, the kittens won't be making an appearance tonight. Um, one of them is actually still here because whenever I was getting ready to pack them up to take them to their new home <clears throat> she stayed hidden and uh, didn't get to take her to the new new owner yet so she's still here and uh, been, been keeping me happy and her mom went crazy for a little over a day just meowing where's my babies where's my babies poor mama okay check that out you don't see these very often I mean unless you want to see them <laughs> I guess and you can go to the store and buy them you just like I said you don't see them very often and I'll tell you what a sugar cube uh, would would Pretty much last for almost forever. Uh, I have, personally, I have sugar cubes. I've got about, I'm going to say anywhere between 30 and 50 of them, from K-Rations, World War II K-Rations. And they're all perfect. Absolutely perfect. They're all Domino uh, brand. And then I've got uh, three boxes of sugar that are not Domino brand. Since I'm going to do the cider hot too, I'm going to go ahead and get the get it poured at the same time. Do both the hot drinks at the same time. Well, I'm not coming back to it. Wow, it's holy! What? That's way stronger. <laughs> There's not a tear notch on it. All right. Well. Oh, did I just drop that can opener in my pocket? 
I'll bet you I, I did. All right, so what we're going to do, if you didn't have anything, and this is this rations, all you had, you didn't have a knife in your pocket like me. I mean, I do, but boom. You were provided an easy way to open this. Yeah. Look at that. Something I've always wanted to do with this cider. Try a little bit on its own. Like that. I've never done that before. Mmm. Wow. That is tart. Mmm. That is straight up like apple candy. Very tasty. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Nice and sweet. Yeah, like kind of like sweet tart, you know. Get the stove out of the way, guys. Unhook it. Oh, I had good intentions of using it. Just did not pan out. Shocker was going to be mad. Bob wanted me to do it on a stove with the mess kit too, and I totally forgot to get my mess kit out. I, I had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff on my mind as well. But definitely uh, did a lot of prepping for today. Spent all day digging stuff out. Well, I had to run down the, down the road to the store a little bit ago too, but other than that, pretty much all day. All right. Okay, as soon as I pour these, I'm going to get the main. Set that back here. And it's going to be sweet and creamy. Now, this is a magic cup, if you didn't know. Watch good old Bobby make his appearance there as the cup decides to reveal him. Alright, yeah, I don't want to leave that, uh, that corned beef hash in there for too awful long. To figure out what we're going to we'll probably do, one of the bouillon cubes. Um, just, you know, one ain't much different from the other. One's chicken, one's beef. I'm a chicken type of guy myself. Okay, well, that needs to be in there longer. I uh, didn't factor in the fact that I had to dump more water into the pot, and that cooled it down, because I didn't, I mean, obviously, it was hot water, but it came out of the sink, so. All right. Get our, well, get our eating utensil out here. So right now as we speak, Shocker 71 is at Minotaur <clears throat> with Bob. And uh, as you can tell, they're not in the chat, so <laughs> they're they're off doing something else. Uh, off world Adam. What's up, off world Adam? Ooh. Okay, so the the sugar cube, oddly enough, stuck to the bottom of the cup. I mean, it pretty much all dissolved, but left an interesting sticky spot on the bottom as I went to stir it. Huh. Probably could have added a little bit more water to both of those. What do y'all think? I don't know. Uh, 
it's been a while since I used the Superman cup here. It's gotten a little bit dusty because it's sat for a couple weeks. Mm, yep, it's good. Good enough. What? Well, let's do. Oh man. Yeah, it's gonna kill my back to bend over. <laughs> Let's do the pink lemonade in the Superman cup here. Eight ounces of water, so pretty much half a bottle. I should have ripped that better. That's my fault. There. Hey, Brownie, what are you doing? Well, not entirely my fault, so oddly enough, this is a little bit chunky, like it's gotten a little bit of moisture or something. Hmm. Oh, I need way more in there. This, there's not much comes in these little packs, so if you don't get it all out of there, your drink just ain't going to be up to snuff if you put the whole eight ounces in there. And didn't get all your all your powder out brownie don't come on man you just dumped that whole box uh, I've got a pretty much half a bottle right here so that's that's perfect See if it'll dissolve after it's gotten hard like that. I'm not gonna put it all in there because I don't think I got really all the powder as much as I could. You got a bunch of these drinks though. I mean, what was it, three of each? I think. Chicken be better. I don't know if I got anything to go with the beef. Yeah, let's do the chicken. I'm a chicken kind of guy. That's what when it comes to bouillon. I like that little pull tab on that. It's convenient. Makes it makes it easy to get out of there. There we go. Got a little cube in there. Hot water to it. Like my bouillon to be uh, a little, a little bit on the thicker side. So I'll probably add about four, four and a half ounces of water. It's already got a little bit of a sheen on top there from the fats in the uh, in the bouillon. Mm. Let's take a look at the crackers and jam can. Try to hurry and get through this. Ooh, okay, interesting. So you got a nice strawberry jam, an MRE strawberry jam with a 2019 date code, nice and fresh strawberry jam. And a cream cheese icing, or I don't know what. And, oh, what is this? I don't know. No, what are these things? These are like little wafer crackers or something. I don't know what those are. Interesting. I did not expect that. I expected something totally different, so... 
Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Sunshine Biscuit Company uh, and Nabisco. Two of the main companies doing crackers or biscuits, whatever you want to call them, in the K-rations back in the day. And this is our snack, which is oh, cool, which is, uh, this is that smoothie snack blend right here. Nice little pouch of that. And we got some chocolate or candy. I don't know what they're. chocolate covered sunflower seeds. Candy covered sunflower seeds. I don't know. There's sunflower seeds that are made up of M&Ms. So chocolate covered and candy coated. Melt in your mouth, not in your hand type deal. Boom and boom. So we'll check those out. I think they present better in a package like that. Plus I don't enough spots. I, I couldn't imagine trying to do this on a on a mess kit with uh with only at, at best three spots. All right, I'm gonna go get this uh main. It sounds like it's boiling over. Yeah, I went to walk in there, and I could have swore that it was boiling over, but uh, it wasn't doing nothing. So, I don't know what I've seen or heard, or both. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. All right. I think we're just about there. I think we are just about there. What else do I got to do here? Uh, I think I got everything out. Crackers. Let's take a look at these uh these sky flake crackers. Okay, Bob was pretty proud of these. Um, he did he did mention these to me when we were talking one time about a week ago or so. Okay, look at that. These uh. These look very similar to something I've had before, and I think most of you guys would would agree. Wow, if you put two of them together, it's almost almost the same size as an MRE cracker. It looks very similar. Let me smell it. Not much of a smell to it. Huh. All right, well, I'm looking forward to trying that. What's next? I think that's just about got us. Yeah. All right. Let me get a bowl here. Okay. Now, as you know, this is a big main right here. As soon as I go sticking this spoon in it, this spoon is done. It's not going to touch another drink, so let me uh, mix up the bouillon here. Which that mixed right up, pretty much. I don't think there's any chunks at all left in there. Go back to the coffee real quick. I did just lick the spoon off. That's all I did. Instead of wiping it off. I didn't see a napkin, which... I mean, yeah, K-Rations would have had toilet paper in them. You had Waldorf. Try to give this a little bit of a mix, because all that oil is sitting right there on the top. It's kind of boiled up to the top.
just going to have to scoop out about half of it here. Looking good though, gotta say. It smells good too. Mm. Smells fantastic. I think that's about half the can right there. And uh, that's a huge amount. <laughs> that's heavy. <laughs> that's a heavy bowl of food right there. Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, let's uh, let's dig in. Oh, we're going to, oh, here it is. I want to try it without the salt and pepper first. Uh, I don't know what what brand this corned beef hash was originally. I'm going to assume probably Hormel, if I, if I was a betting man, just judging by the way it looks. All right, well, here we go. Down the hatch. Mm-hmm. Mm Classic. A little bit too greasy, but where I, I should have mixed it better. So, mm. it's like I just uh, slathered my lips with a stick of butter. <laughs> but the flavor is amazing. Beefy. You got that really, really nice flavor that comes through. Super savory. The potatoes texture is really nice. Uh, heat it up well. It's exactly, if you've ever had corned beef hash, it's exactly what you would expect out of a good corned beef hash. No complaints whatsoever from me. Oh, cool. I was wondering if those were actually going to break on the perforations. Nice. Well, let's uh, let's give this a try. With the, well, wait. Let me try the cracker on its own. Get my palate. Well, not cleanse, but swallow everything real good. There we go. Give this cracker a try. Hmm. First thing I notice is um, there's a little bit of salt there, not like on it, but in it that you can taste. And I would say that the flavor is pretty similar. If you've ever had an MRE cracker, it's partially like that. But it's also about 50% a, uh, a civilian saltine. This is a more firm texture than a saltine. It's got a much better chew than a saltine, in my opinion. Um... But you also get a little bit of that flavor that you get from a MRE cracker. Uh, it's per pretty weird to, to to get this in a civilian cracker. Not gonna lie, uh, never experienced any anything like a MRE cracker in in a civilian <laughs> anything. So let's try them together. I think they're gonna mix really well together, actually. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the way to eat that there. I would say it is lacking on some hot sauce, though. It doesn't need any salt. It's uh, it's plenty rich in sodium already. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to put the pepper on it. Hmm. I'm going to have to break the knife out for this. put some over here there we go it's good for a start I'm gonna set it up here where I can set it upright here on my mantle all right now let's give it a try 
with some hot sauce mixed with that cracker. Cracker adds a really nice, obvious contrast and texture, which uh, is, is always welcome in my opinion. Smells so good the cut the cat will not leave me alone. <laughs> Does it smell good, Brownie? Huh? Brownie also grew up on the live streams here. Back when she was a little baby. She's the one that stuck around. So the hot sauce is not very hot. But I do like the flavor. And it adds a little bit of heat. A little bit of that vinegar flavor. I think hot sauce mixes excellent with a, with a good corned beef hash like this. And I'm not going to lie. The, the grease is bothering me. Because there's just too much of it. Uh, I definitely... Where... The water only came up about, I don't know, halfway or so on the can, maybe a little higher. As it heated up, it pushed all that grease up as it lightened up and got hot. All the grease rose to the top of the can. And when I scooped it out, that's what I got, even though I tried to mix it up a little bit. But if I was doing it properly and dumped it out or... For that matter, just dug in. If I was outside or something like that, I just dug in and didn't worry about spilling a little bit of it on the ground or something like that. Then, uh, then it would have mixed up a lot better. But I definitely, uh, or for that matter, I could have just strained off some of the grease. Um, anyway, I'm going to cleanse the old palate with uh, what was this? Pink lemonade, I think with this clear pink lemonade. Let's see. <coughs> Down the wrong hole. Everybody's saying goodbye to Chris. Goodbye, Chris. You know, when I first saw this stuff for the first time, when Minotaur, or maybe it was, I don't know, MRE Nation, I can't remember who, which company it was that had it first. I think it was probably Minotaur. But I was like, man, it's like, nah, I ain't gonna like that. Just by looking at it, you know, judging the book by its cover. But of course, I'll give it a try. I actually do like this. It's got decent flavor. For no more powder than what you get, it does have decent flavor. And I don't get a whole lot of that weird, bitter, like it's an aftertaste, in my opinion, that, that you get with artificial sweeteners. You don't get a whole lot of that going on here. I don't know if it's where it's got the, the added vitamin C. I don't know what it is that's kind of canceling out some of that uh, artificial flavor or that artificial sweetener flavor. But, and honestly, it's a great palate cleanser. You know, that's got my palate nice and fresh and ready to move on to whatever the next item I choose is. <sighs> Definitely clogged up. <clears throat> uh, let's try. Let's go for... Nah, we'll stick with savory. Chicken bouillon. So get to mix up I'm doing this with my left hand. I am not left handed. Okay. Chicken bouillon cube with about I don't know, four ounces of water. I don't know how you can see how greasy that is. It's pretty greasy. Alright, here we go. Let's see. Mmm. Oh. It smells herby. And obviously chickeny. Smells uh 
hot. <laughs> the heat going up my nose. Mmm. Salty as a mother. Holy wow. Yeah. Maybe I should have added more water. Because that is salty. Salty, salty, salty. Mm, I like salt, though. <laughs> it's not good for me, but I like it. Um, yeah. I mean... I don't know. It's exactly what you would expect out of a bouillon cube. And... Let's say it's cold outside, and uh, you're, you're obviously you take this can, this thing camping or whatever, and all these cans are like honestly I should put them to use somehow because the cans are super cool and I'm sure super useful. And now that the uh, crackers and jam can is open, we could have easily made our drinks in this. I mean I, that can right there, I can guarantee you will hold. Uh, I'm going to say probably 10 ounces, maybe, I don't know, 8 to 10 ounces, roughly. Excuse me, if I was just a guess, uh, something like that. Yeah, I'm kind of missing my old, my old brew tonight. But I figured I shouldn't focus on, uh, on something like that today. I should, uh should stick more to the Memorial Day type theme. So, Memorial Day didn't, I mean, according to the internet, <clears throat> kind of started, I think it said after, after the Civil War, but it wasn't even named Memorial Day until the 70s. After, I think it was after Vietnam ended. And it's uh, supposed to be honoring the men and women that uh, that were killed in action, basically. Although I think uh, I think it's turned into more of uh, remembering any any military service. At least I think that's what it should be. Kind of a military remembrance day. Any any of your family members that are still with us or no longer with us should be uh, should be taken care of today or remembered one or the other going for the jam next yep that's what I'm thinking I waited long enough in between the uh, the bouillon Tell you what, before I before I go any further with this, ugh, let's uh let's get these crackers, biscuits, whatever these things are, opened up. And I guess that little piece right there was staring right at me, so I'm gonna give it a try. I can't smell it. Uh Maybe I smell a little bit of cinnamon. They don't have a whole lot of smell to them. That or my nose is broken, which it very well could be right now. But my mouth is watering just looking at them. They're very appetizing in their appearance. They look tasty. So let's give them a try. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> I like those. They got a really nice sweet flavor to them. Cinnamony, sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. Buttery. Really nice crunch to them. Mm. Wow. Wow. I probably shouldn't try the jam on those first because then I won't want to I won't want to try it on there. So I'll start it off on one of these. Yeah, that jam is looking good. I wish they would go back to the one and a half half ounce portions. 
they did that. They they added more items into the MRE. But man, I like the ounce and a half better. All right, it's good looking jam, strawberry jam. Mm. Really good on these crackers. Me, if I'm going to have a sweet jam like this, I prefer to have it on a cracker like this. It's more on the savory side than, a, than on a sweet cracker, I think. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, you wanting to say hello? Here, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Say hello. Mm. Hi. Say hi. <laughs> you smell like corned beef hash too, don't you? Hmm. No, oh, little baby. No, oh, little baby. Oh. Oh boy. Hmm. Well, honey. Okay. Go on. Yeah, I like it on the savory cracker quite a a lot. Um, the strawberry jam, creamy, fruity, sweet. Um. Great strawberry flavor because it's it's natural. I'll try it on this sweet cracker here. CT with the super chat. CT, what's up, dude? Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, great to see everyone. Hey, that's the kitty I called dibs on. <laughs> uh, yeah, she. Well, I mean, she nicknamed Callie because she's Calico. So, uh, well, CT, uh, she's still up for dibs, buddy. We can make it happen. She can be a truck kitty. <laughs> I don't know how well that would work out, but uh, anyway. Thank you for that super chat, CT. Man, oh man. Uh, you guys you guys are too generous to me. I don't deserve, uh, I don't deserve anything that you guys do, man. I, I just appreciate the community and uh, the camaraderie that we all have together. It's, it's, it's a great... It's a great little community, man. All right, here. I'm going to quit talking and eat this food. That flavor overpowers the strawberry, honestly. It really... Um, more or less takes it over. I mean, you can still taste it a little bit. A little bit of the tanginess of the... Uh... Honey, go on. Go on. Good girl. The tanginess of the uh, strawberry comes through a little bit, but uh, that... It, it's awful. Because there is a... Uh... There is a flavor that I'm trying to think of that that cracker is ginger ah ginger because it's almost like it's got a little bit of a subtle heat to it which ginger would it's like a little ginger snap or something like that so what we're going to do here is just I'm gonna, I'm gonna icing it up Like so. And, uh, I mean, I guess I probably could have used two here. Or, you know what? Just make it look pretty here. Let me use my finger. See if I can get it to spread out nicely. No, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. I guess it looks alright. Let's see what it tastes like with the icing on it.
Okay. Well, that makes more sense. When I saw this, I was like, what am I going to do with that? You're going to put it on these. And it's going to be awesome. Really good. Those two mix really well together. Well, that's kind of like a sweet, buttery, sugary, gingery. Almost like a little, I mean, it's little, they're little cookies. Little thin cookies. Wafer thin. I don't know if they're considered wafers or not. I think they're a little too thick to be considered a wafer. But, almost. Yeah. I gotta go back for... This is my favorite out of the uh, spreads with the... Uh, this is my favorite mixture. Spread with cracker right here. The strawberry with the uh, with the savory. Yep. Mike. Yeah, that icing's got a got a weird. I wouldn't say aftertaste. Initial taste. I guess. But. It tastes just like the military icing, which I think is what it is. I'm going to assume that's what it is. I mean, there's your ingredients. Sugar, margarine's the second ingredient. And then that soybean oil, which I think is probably what we're tasting. The soybean has a very distinctive flavor. In my opinion, it does. At least I pick up on it. Mm, vitamins... So you got vitamins in there, cream cheese, cream cheese cultures, salt, so soybean oil again, contains less than 2%, lactic acid, okay. Anyway, if you've ever had one of the um, UGR cakes before that came with the cream cheese icing, might even be called white icing, I can't remember what it, it's been a while. Man, is it called cream cheese ice cream? I can't remember. But this, I'm going to try another a little bit here. I don't know, it grows on you. It's not, I've had this before where it's been kind of gritty. I don't know if it was where it was colder outside and in my house. But uh, that's smoother. And it really, I've had some that had, had a weird kind of initial chemical flavor to them. That one doesn't really have that going on when I just tried it on its own. And I think it tastes alright on its own. I think mixing it with other things is, is sometimes not, it just doesn't mix well with some things. It does mix well with those little cookie wafer cracker things. Whatever you want to call them. You, know, you get a Pretty decent helping of the uh, smoothie snack blend here, I would say. Which is going to have like, uh, what is that, a golden raisin, I'm going to assume. And then you got uh, pineapple chunks in there. Some big old chunks of coconut that uh, sometimes are really hard. And nice white chocolate chips. So, get out of there. Try a handful there. A little bit of everything. I only got one coconut chip, but two of everything else there. All right. Let's see. Hmm. That stuff's awesome. Me personally, I would pick it out and eat it sectioned out because that's just how I eat stuff like that. I'd eat all the pineapple together, all the raisins together. I wouldn't eat the white chocolate chips. <laughs> that's just me. And the coconut, I'd spread out because it's kind of hard to eat. Very tough. Not a fan of the coconut. Just, I, even sometimes the thin stuff, but this stuff is so thick 
and and stiff, hard, that it's it's definitely difficult to eat. And of course, you can mix these over in with your smoothie snack blend as well. I mean, it does mix well together, though. Everything does. does go well together. Mm. I'm going to end up exploding these. Okay, I got a hole in them now, somehow. Managed to put a hole right, right below the heat seal there. Alright. Mainly yellow. <laughs> got a bunch of yellers out of there. Alright. Those things are super easy to eat. They got a nice savory flavor that comes through the sweetness to kind of balance it out. Nice chew to it. The candy coating makes it, like I said, makes it easy to eat. The only thing about this is you got to like sunflowers. You gotta like sunflower seeds or, or this is no good for you. But what Bob did tell me is there is no set side items or even menus. You order a dinner, it could be anything and any sides. So your snacks can end up being literally anything. I don't want that many. I don't even want any, I don't think. Hmm. My son is about to get in trouble. Hmm. Not cool. He ain't supposed to be, he was supposed to finish cleaning his room. And not play video games, but he's definitely playing video games right now. What would be what? Um, wash it down with the cider. Let's see. I should have tried this earlier with the uh, strawberry after the strawberry jam and crackers. Let's see. Oh man, that is really nice going down. I mean, that's just, this is comfort drink, and I mean, I, honestly, it's, it feels almost, almost like a food. I don't know what it is about the, uh, the apple cider that just kind of, it's got this sweet savoriness to it. Reminds you of, uh, well, it reminds me of wintertime. And I just keep wanting to drink it. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Yeah, so 40 bucks, uh, Aletha. So if you guys use the 10% off, I'd put it at like 36 I mean, there is a lot of food here. Don't get me wrong. And I think the cans are cool. Plus, you get yourself a, an opener. And what else? You get four packs of crackers in there. Let's see what this candy bar is all about. I used to get these things. I used to go to an international market up in Columbus until it literally disappeared on me. Um, in between, I see a doctor up there, and I went to see the doctor, and I went to that international market afterwards, and it was just gone. And it that place was huge too. It's called Cam Market, but it it was had everything. Russian stuff, French stuff, um, all, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. I guess, let's just look at this bar, because who doesn't like to see a nice, pretty chocolate bar, right? Isn't that nice? Oh, it's broken right there. I still can't think of the freaking word. Maybe somebody, uh... Somebody typed it in the comments, probably, or in the chat. Maybe somebody will type it in the in the comments. 
once this thing uploads what that stuff I cannot remember it's obviously not nougat and I'm I for some reason I keep thinking ganache but I don't know here we go let's try oh uh, cool freaking huge mosquito awesome right here mm. it's got to die I don't like killing stuff but I really have no sympathy towards mosquitoes what do I have that I could kill it with huh right here man I don't want to smack it on my Mickey Mantle autograph picture and I missed all right so not a huge fan of these chocolate bars I'd rather just not have the stuff inside of them to be honest I I just like the chocolate now it's uh it's all right it's gooey it's got some bitterness to it not much it's got sweetness to it obviously definitely not too much I mean it's enough it's chewy when I think of dark chocolate I think of uh, a nice stiff chocolate that has a nice hard bite to it and chew that ain't got that it should be called like dark chocolate something like I, I I can't think of the word I'm getting a brain fart right now but it's a filled candy bar not just a solid dark chocolate bar I'm gonna wash it down with some of this uh, sweet and creamy coffee that I've concocted here it has a sugar cube two packs of creamer a pack of sugar and one taster's choice master blend right anyway Master, well, I don't know. I can't remember. What is it? Classic? What is this? Nescafe, Taster's Choice, House Blend. My bad. Could not, <laughs> could not remember that. Mm-hmm. That's actually really strong. Stronger than what I thought it was going to be. So, there's a lot of tannins going on in there. Got that nice bitter dryness to your tongue. I think if I was to uh, try to drink that straight without any cream or sugar, it would not be my favorite. Although I do like to have a nice hit of the of some strong tannins, but this is uh, I'd say it's more closer to a dark roast. Mm. Take that back. It's right in. A, it's it's a medium. I'd call it a medium. All right. I think I have sampled everything except. The lifesaver, which I'll save right here, and uh, I'll finish the rest of this up here in a minute. I'll take this to the kitchen oh, so it doesn't get knocked over or anything like the incident that I had a couple few weeks ago, whatever that was. I mean, the little kitten did it, it's not here anymore. She was my favorite, I miss her. The little black one, I do, I miss her big time.
not get on that stove a little bit. Do not. All right. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think about the uh, modern day take on, uh, or I guess modern day food and older type packaging here? Well, I mean, you know, the canned main, the canned everything else, actually. So every everything was in a can, more or less. Yeah, I, I actually I do think this is pretty well thought out. Um, I think there's there's a lot of inclusiveness here. It, anything, just about anything, could be improved upon if you think hard enough about it and uh, experiment enough with other items. Which uh, that's how things get improved. Research and development. You just trial and error. Uh, all right, first couple things that I got here that I've just kind of got sitting around honestly I got these out whenever we were filming eating history because they asked me what I had uh, of my grandpa's and I have a little book of pictures which I those are stashed away that they're too hard to get to right now they're stashed away anyway this is like uh, this is his ID bracelet it's got his name engraved on it silver a lot of the guys a lot of guys wore these bracelets I mean so many and uh, he always wore this always always had well I think he had two of these maybe three they were all the same more or less and he always had one on um, he had a he had a life alert or it's not a life alert, but a maybe it's a life alert. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but he had a pacemaker, and so he had a he had a bracelet that he wore that identified him as having a pacemaker. Which as soon as you looked at his chest, you knew that he had a pacemaker because it's like it was like a heart poking out of his chest is what it looked like. And then there, this is cool. So I don't have a strap for it. I never have. But uh, I think it's a Waltham. Yeah, it's a Waltham. And this was actually issued to him. Let's see if we can get it to pick up. Yeah. So. On the bottom there. Those numbers. Let me see if I can read them in, in person. It's so OG dash one three zero two eight. And uh, unfortunately, here I'll show you. Wait. Watch the second hand. So it will move. But it will not, will not run properly. Um, see, kind of like sticks. I need to take it and try to get it fixed because I would like to have this functioning properly. Uh, that's that's good. It hasn't been messed with. It hasn't been opened up before, so it should be repairable and uh, I think it's definitely worth doing you know put a band on it get it fixed have that glass polished because it's pretty scratched All right I don't know if it's sapphire or what what that is probably just I don't know it doesn't even feel like glass it feels almost like some sort of plastic composite of some type or something but uh, pretty cool his watch This is a. Uh, this is not his burial flag, but I do have. This is another flag that uh, that we had, or they gave us, or I'm not exactly sure how this one and what this one 
this definitely had to do with him though. So in here is his uh, efficiency honor. I can't remember what that medal is. There's his rifle medal, and over here's his World War II medal, victory medal, or service medal. I've got some of his other medals, uh, all the medals that he got. I've got them as well. They're under the table right here. And then, uh, and then I've also got this. This is his burial flag. This is uh, the one that they gave to my grandma. Uh, that's his VFW hat, obviously, with, uh, with all these little crosses on there on his hat and uh, I used to go to funerals with him all the time he was part of the 21 gun salute so he's got two covers in here this is just a blank one and this is, this is definitely one that he wore all the time and uh, as you see he's got a canine core pen right there and he was a dog trainer and uh, he used he used dogs in World War II that's what he done um, not exactly sure to the extent of what the, what what he done with them I would love to know though I'd love to know more detail about that but I do have some some of his the records that tell me where he was at at certain points in time and uh, what he was doing, he was working with dogs, which is cool. And uh, let's see over here, let's get the, the World War II, which needs polished bad. <laughs> wow. You don't let it look like that. That looks better just, just rubbing it off. A little flag and a little gold cross right there. Every time I go to a funeral with him, I would get one, one or two of these, these little crosses. They would always hand them out at at the funerals. I don't know, just one of those things, I guess. His ties in here, clip one tie. I wear this every time. Probably still. It's probably actually his smell on that. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then the, the little grave marker there. That's what that is. Pretty sure that's what that is. Seems to me like that was put up. See, he the where he's buried at. Like it, there, in my opinion, it's a, it's a little bit strange. I mean, I I understand why it is the way it is because some people will leave a mess but there you're not allowed to put anything on on the on the ground it has to be in the little holders that are attached the brass holders that are attached to his headstone uh i guess i could go up there and put it in, in or down there i should say it's down river from me Go down there and put a uh, eternal light on there, solar powered light. I should do that. But yeah, uh, there's his cover and his tie. I didn't realize his tie was in there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been in here before and I knew it. I just had forgotten that it was in there. Yeah, that's the one that the funeral home gave us. Fogel song. It's no longer called Fogel Song anymore. I don't think. I think it's called Taylor or something like that. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Now, something in here. Oh, God. I have not looked in this in probably. Oh, man. It has been many, many, many years. It's It's been probably seven to ten years. 
since I've looked since I've even looked in here. I had to dig this out today. There's something really special in here. It was actually stolen from me at one point in time. And uh, I had to track it down and uh, and buy it back, which is pretty sad, but uh, that's what I had to do. And it was it was important to me that I did that. What's in here? That's so weird. It's like, you know, when you don't mess with stuff for so long, and then you go looking at it again, you see stuff that you haven't seen. It's like, it's like brand new, <laughs> where you haven't seen it in so long. Pretty cool. is this mm, just a silver round nothing nothing special huh I don't know why I'd have it packaged like this I this is not something I would do I don't remember doing that I must have just bought it like that and, and just threw it in here and it's been so long uh, I think this is probably it right here so I got it I got it written on here yep this is it. So, wait. <clears throat> is that it? Mm -hmm. Take it out and look at it. Look at this tail. Yep, there it is. So, my grandpa actually gave this to me. He handed this to me. And he told me that he carried this in his wallet the entire time that he, that he was in the war. And uh, he was still carrying it in his wallet the day that he gave it to me. And I carried it in my wallet for years. And then I decided that that was not a good idea. That I should put it up. So, I did. And probably within a year or two after that happened, after I put it up, my coin collection got stolen. Uh, everything. Every, not just my coin collection, but everything got stolen uh, that was valuable at the time out of my house that, that the person could carry. So the coin collection got stolen. My, every bit of my lady's jewelry got stolen. Like I had a three hundred dollar pair of Oakleys, which I know is stupid, but I, it was I was young, dumb. <laughs> uh, it, like, I, like I had a, a a coin necklace, got stolen. Um, what else? I don't know. Everything. So it was all gone. And the main reason that I freaked out so bad, to and had to track track the stuff down. I ended up paying like, it seems like. Probably close to, I think five thousand dollars to get all my crap back, and this is this was back in like, uh, I'm gonna say probably like two thousand, seven, eight, maybe something like that, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, somewhere along in there. I don't know, but. If I hadn't got that coin right there back, and I don't care to handle it. I mean, like I said, I, I carried this in my own wallet for, for many years. He carried it in his wallet for many years. This coin is far from being valuable to anyone but me. I mean, honestly. I mean, it's worth whatever the silver silver value is in it, which right now is probably 20 some dollars, 25 bucks maybe. I think it's up, it's up quite a bit right now. But to me... <laughs> That one coin right there is 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 priceless. It's just it's kind of kind of strange, but it is what it is. And like I said, it's nothing really all that special. It's just uh, it's special to me because I know it's history, and I know that this thing went everywhere he did <laughs> throughout the war. So pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. I forgot I even kept stuff like like this. It's in this bag right here. I mean, there. So, uh, I don't know how many of these other coins were his too, but uh, 
that's because he collected. The one that I just showed you is is one that he carried. That was, you know, that one's just different. It's just different than anything else. I forgot about even having that. That might actually be worth something. That's like a, it's like a die cut mistake or a double strike or something on that dime. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a pretty good one actually, as far as an error coin goes. I'm gonna venture to say that that little dime right there is probably worth about. I don't know, maybe 10 bucks or something? I don't know, I shouldn't be handling it the way I am. <laughs> Since it's probably actually worth something. I think it says 06? 05. So, I probably had, I've probably had this since 2005 or 6. You know how dimes are, they come out and you get them in your chains as soon as they're brand new. A lot of chains you don't, you, did. Some, you didn't used to see it like that. It'd take a while to hit circulation. But that, that might even be a triple. That might even be a triple strike. Camera will focus. Oh, cool. So my phone isn't it isn't charging right now. What the heck? Let's see if that helps. Turn the brightness down on it a little bit. Oh, you know what? I didn't do. I didn't break out that chem light. Let me go get that real quick. I don't know if you guys ever wanted to see any more of this this type of stuff. Like, like I said, I haven't went through this. I'll show you guys one other coin that's uh, it's got a little bit of significance to me. Nobody else. And I was an idiot. God, I was an, I was a stupid kid. Um, what is that? Oh, an NRA. That's probably not silver. Yeah, well, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe it is. It sounds like it is. It's this one right here. This little coin right here. It's 04. Nope, that's not correct. Son of a... Wait, let me just... Right there, that's it. Right here. Right there. That's the one. So this coin right here ended up... It was extremely tarnished. Uh, to the point to where... Like, it, it was great. It was, it was amazing. It had this really nice tarnish ring on it right here. From where I had another coin sitting on top of it. And I threw it in this little wooden box. And forgot about it. I didn't even think nothing else about it. It was in it was in the plastic holder like this, but it tarnished really, really, um, like rainbow. It was really, really pretty. And at the time, I had no clue what I had. I had no idea. Um, not that this coin right here is all that special, but this is the only coin. This is the only anything that I can think of like this. That I was actually with my dad. I was eight years old, seven or eight years old. We were at uh, Tawny's Jewelers in Galpolis, Ohio, and he bought something else while we were in there, and for some reason, he bought me this coin, and gave me this coin, and, you know, I always, I always kept it, but I just never really thought much of it, and I, at that point, I'd never gotten into coins, collecting coins, I collected baseball, football, and basketball cards, that was my thing, that's what I'd done as a kid, like, I collected cards and played sports. That's what I done and rode bicycles and <laughs> that was my thing. But uh, coin collections just ne I, I never had an inkling to do it. And then about uh, let's see, I was probably uh, I was probably 15, 16. I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe even 17 or 18. I don't know. No, because I, I yeah, I probably started collecting when I was 17 or 16, something like that. But I found this coin. I had totally forgotten about it. I found it in the little box that I threw it into. A little wooden box that was in my bedroom at my house. My grand while I was living with my grandma. I found it. I pulled it out. And I was like, ooh. I was like, what in the world happened to this thing? So what did I do? I polished it. I polished it. I, I took it out of the holder. And I buffed that son of a gun. So stupid. So dumb. 
Um, the coin would have probably been worth anywhere between four to ten times what it <laughs> what it is now, <laughs> for sure. Um, now it's just it's just straight up silver value. There's nothing there's nothing you can do with it because uh because my idiocy of thinking that the the tarnish on it was a bad thing. But I can get the, look at the scratch marks on that thing. Holy cow! I don't even remember how I polished it, but it wasn't. <laughs> you can't you, you can't actually polish it out. Like you'd have to. There are certain chemicals that you can use to remove tarnish and stuff properly to preserve the coin without scratching the crap out of it like I did with this. But this thing is is pretty well screwed. So uh all Andal says twenty five ninety four for spot. So that's that would be precisely what this this coin is worth. Is twenty dollars and 94 cents there's no numismatic value here you know i know a lot of you guys probably don't know uh, or have never gotten into coins um, i got quite a few of these but i did so that one's special to me only me nobody also yeah that is the year my son was born that's starting to tarnish a little bit up there on the i don't know if you can see it it's got some nice little tarnish starting right there you can barely see it. I can see it a lot better with my eye. It's starting to rainbow a little bit right here. Mm, it's got a mark right there too, like it got contaminated or something. Anyway, that's more of a burnished dye look. This looks more like a proof coin, but it is it isn't. And uh, I can only assume it's probably from where I buffed the crap out of it. Let's see what the mint mark is on this thing, if there even is one. There is not one. And on this one. Huh. I thought these things had mint marks on them. My bad, I guess not. I mean, I know some of them do. Like the San Francisco ones, the, the proof ones. Anyway, so my son, born 01. My other son, born 04. So 01 and 04. And then the one my dad bought. So I keep those three together to, uh, I don't know, pass these along to my kids one of these days. Like I said, there's not a whole lot here that's special. My grandpa collected nickels like a, I don't know what. Like he is, which that's a 48 nickel. It's not silver or anything like that. But he's got, I got a whole bunch of coins that he collected. Well, not coins. Nickels and pennies, a bunch of wheat pennies. <clears throat> I kind of partially went through the wheat pennies one time, looking for key dates and stuff. Didn't find anything worth keeping. Well, not that I would get rid of any of it, but nothing, nothing valuable. Um, some standing Liberty quarters. Forty-four, forty-three. Yeah, 42, 43, and 44. That's a nice, nice sequence of dates there. Mm. Chuck E. Cheese coins for the first time. Took my son to Chuck E. Cheese. My other son wasn't even born yet. Now that right, that coin right there, that's another one of my grandpa's coins. And it was cool, man. My grandpa had this coin, and he had a, uh envelope with a first day issue Kennedy stamp on it that had the stamp in the envelope and in a plastic holder and when it got when all my stuff got stolen i did not get that back uh, i did get the coin back loose like this but i did not get the whole set back which just burned my rear end um i i didn't get some stuff back not not i wouldn't say it was a lot but it was enough that i didn't get back I guess I just found some random. Jeez, is that a 16? It is. 1916 penny. I don't know. Find stuff like that back in the day and I just I'd throw it in here. And I had this weird penny. Look at that. I don't know what's going on with that. That is actually penny material too. 
it's not like someone welded it or something like that that's it's on the penny <clears throat> and it's made out of whatever that is, is came from the mint that way so that's an interesting penny to find I don't know what else is in here I did collect all these too until they stopped selling them so Eighty-seven. Bought that one just loose. Twenty-two. Eighteen eighty-nine. This is a must be a Philly. It's been so long, I don't even remember what the mint marks are on them. The Peace dollar is a weird one. It's got nice luster to it. You can't it won't pick it up on camera. Hey, yeah, it did. It actually did pick it up. It's got really nice luster to it. Kind of a cartwheel to the to the luster. And other silver dollars down in here. Oh, that's got some nice color happening on it there. I think I probably paid 16 bucks for the hat <clears throat> back in the day. It had 20 on it. I never paid what they said on it. That one, that one actually says 16 on it. It's in bad shape. Yep. Alright. I know you guys have seen enough of this. I'll put it up. And, uh, yeah. We'll end, end the live stream. Oh, you know what? I, I did say that I would get that Kim like. lights out and we'll see <laughs> it's pretty ghetto <laughs> yeah well last time I looked at this 10 years ago I was I was at a different place in my life and uh, you know I was still partially was I still nah wasn't a kid right no nah, wasn't a kid but I just I'd never changed it I kept it in that for so long all right let me uh, let me go grab that I'll be right back Let's see. Oh, you know what? I do have something else big right here that I was going to show y'all. It's going to be kind of hard to show you to you guys. Uh, let me get this out of the way. God, oh, that's heavy. All right. Get this out of the way. Well, I don't know where I'm going to put this. Can't put it back where it was at. All right, so one other thing. I typically wouldn't do this, but since it, uh, I mean, since it's the Memorial Day live stream, uh, I'll show it to you guys. Uh, it's not. Again, something that's not too special to anybody but me. But, uh, this is, uh, it's the only gun that he ever actually gave me. Because he passed away when I was young. I mean, I was only, uh, 12 or 13, I think. I'd have to double check that, but I think that's what I, I think that's how old I was. And we were at the American Legion, which is in my backyard. Like literally, it's in my backyard. You guys know. You've seen it. This is just a uh this is an old school Marlin. Twenty two WMR. Really nice stainless steel barrel. Really nice, pretty, pretty.
pretty wood grain. Yeah, the the yeah, Kalen, it's got a really nice pattern to it. It almost like has this this almost like a pearlescence to it in person that I don't even know how to I don't know how to describe it. It's just uh you know, it changes with the light. And uh you know, back whenever he gave this to me, this was looked at as a insanely mega cheap uh just a just not a, a great gun and uh as the years have went by and marlin got bought out the older stuff like this has became more desirable i wouldn't say exactly valuable or anything like that i don't honestly i have no clue what this gun's worth i don't care it doesn't matter to me it's uh it, it will never ever leave my possession it's just, you know, again, really probably not worth that much to anybody but me. So, it'll get passed down to my kids. And, uh, it's, see, my grandpa was a gun, he was gun collector, gun freak. He, like, freaking loved guns. Um, he was a rifleman. That's what he was. And yeah, that's what he knew. That's what he, it just, it, it was part of him. And uh, he had anywhere in between 50 and 100 World War II era rifles, different calibers, different, just, I don't, I honestly have no clue exactly what all he had. I know he had his service, his, his service rifle. He still had it because he used it. Um, whenever we would go, go to the funerals, that's what he would use. Uh. But the day of his funeral, the day that we were putting him into the ground, his shitty, shitty nephew broke into the house and stole every single one of them. We knew he did it. Cops wouldn't do anything. Uh, small town BS. You know, I, I've, I've told this story before. I was a kid. I mean, I can, I, let me just put it this way. I can guarantee you, if that was, if that was now, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd have every single one of them back. And, uh, I just found out he passed away fairly recently. I need to go to his family and explain to them what happened and see if I could even if I could even get one back or two or I any amount at all one would make me ecstatic to be able to have one of his actual collection back you know that one right there was pulled on a tip board the one I just showed you <laughs> he won it on a tip board like that's how that that came to be and uh I was with him and I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. That stainless steel barrel with the orange sight on the end. I'm like, oh, my God, that's awesome. You know, I was a little kid. I was probably like nine, eight, nine, something like that at the time. And he's like, you know what? He's like, this is going to be yours. I was like, oh, oh, that's no way. He's like, I'll just keep it here with me. You know, we'll go shoot squirrels, do whatever. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, he gave me my first gun that I owned, uh, you know, my own. And, uh, I've always taken good care of it. And, um, you know, even as a kid, you know, I cherished it. <sighs> what is it? My ex-sister-in-law stole the bayonet off my dad's gun. Oh, that freaking reminds me, I forgot. I do have his bayonet. His actual bayonet. I think it was his bayonet. I think it was the one he actually used. Because it's like all taped up. With electrical tape. Which I, I guess he would do that. Or he did do that. And then I also have. A German bayonet. That he. Uh, that he took. <laughs> that he took off of. Uh, off of the German. Alright let's see what this chem light does. Let's see if it's enough light. That's a blue one. Purple. 
purple, blue, whatever. Break these things and then you, you shake them. Uh, you know what? I mean, honestly, like, you can get by with that. After your eyes adjust, right there's the can. I mean, you can see. It's almost like a black light in it. It's kind of crazy. But you could get by with that for sure. Drop that one in your box of food. Break the other one. And uh, just kind of hold it in your mouth. So you got light shining out right in front of you. Or use it like this and kind of move it around. Find other cans back here. Get the camera up. Yep, right there's one. Lights that flag up nice. Kind of wish I'd have did the other one. The blue one, blue or purple, whatever you want to call that. It's just not as bright as like a green or a yellow one would be. But uh, it looks like a tiny shake weight. Yeah, I mean, it. Does, like I said... Uh, Bob didn't have to include these, you know what I mean? So it covers you if if you need if you need light. Oh wow! Whew. I had them lights off for too long. Kill my eyes. <laughs> Turning the lights back on. But yeah, I don't know. Got a little personal there uh, on the uh, the Memorial Day type conversation and uh the little kitty's not in here so i'd bring her up here for the, for the closing out of this live stream but i appreciate all you guys hanging out here on memorial day weekend uh really really appreciate you guys and um i've been bouncing ideas around in my head and i really would like to hear anybody that makes it to this part like you guys are awesome Anybody even skips through and, and finds this, you're awesome. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up or down. Either way, I don't care. Um, or leave a comment once this uploads. Now, uh, I have a I have a, an abundance of these old cans that I've opened up and drank. I have an abundance of, uh, I mean, I do have an abundance of drink mixes and side items and spoons and. Like, hold on, let me just show you real quick. This this ain't this ain't nothing. This is something, but it ain't nothing. This ain't like look. Yeah. So that's some spoons. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm saying is I would like to figure out a way to somewhat I don't know off some boxes or I don't know how to do it I don't know how to do it exactly um, and and somewhat make it fair for you know, anybody anybody make open how, how I could do this um, I got a couple more boxes I need to send out on patreon over there miss Marilyn I need to send miss Marilyn I've got something picked out from miss Marilyn she's really gonna like I think and uh, I just got to get it sent to her but, what I'm saying is if you guys have any ideas on how I could do that, a way we could do that, uh, do it. I, I was thinking like do a super chat thing and then make a list and do a drawing or I don't know. I, I'm just being honest, I really don't know. I don't know how I would do it or what I would do. I'm open to ideas though. So, anybody has any ideas on... A good way to do that. Uh, if if I don't answer the comment, you can pretty much bet that I read it at least. Uh, I haven't answered all the comments in a while because you know a lot of times I don't I haven't really haven't had time to answer them. But when they pop up on my phone, I do read through them. So if you guys have any ideas, please leave a comment. Let me know. Give me give give me your good ideas, and I'll see what I can do with them. But uh, all right, guys, I got a huge mess to clean up. 
and I got a bunch of stuff that I got to put up that I dug out and uh, oh I missed a super chat did I my bad hold on let me go back real quick well, let me just click this and see if it'll show me no it's not showing me there and my my camera might die, guys. I'm not going to lie. If it does, it's over. I won't be back. And I can't get back to the Super Chat. So if anybody can tell me what it was and who it was. That would be appreciated. But anyways, uh, if I missed a Super Chat, I do apologize for that. And... Uh, all right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it got a little little bit deep there, but uh, I enjoyed getting that stuff out and, and messing with it. So, all right, I appreciate everybody that's made it this long again, I, and everybody who stopped by and watched and every single super chat that came through tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I really appreciate everybody who stuck around over on the Patreon, man. I really appreciate that. I that helps me keep looking for rations that I and I haven't I haven't found any. Not that I would be willing to pay the money for that they went for. It's been crazy lately. Uh, I'm hoping that'll die down some. And I did miss out on a couple things, but uh, I, I mean I did bid on them, but I just missed out on them. But uh, they sold for, I'd say, to the high end of being barely acceptable. But all right, guys, that's it. Uh, I guess really all I got left to do now is say thank you, guys for watching and I'll see you on the next live stream later